as the World War I flower class and their immediate successors left Royal Navy service, the need for a small number of replacement vessels, after the London Naval Treaty in 1930 left an unregulated category of ships less than 20 knots, without torpedoes, under 2,000 tons and armed with no more than four guns between three and six inches in calibre, this became a lot easier, as this sort of ship would not count against destroyer or any other treaty-limited tonnage. A series of sloops were thus built during the 1930s to varying patterns of design, with emphasis on either convoy escort, minesweeping, general imperial police duties, or coastal work. With war clouds gathering, Admiral Henderson decided he wanted an all-in-one ship, despite shallow draft, low-speed optimised minesweepers and higher-speed deep ocean escorts seemingly mutually exclusive. A draft design was drawn up in early 1937 for a ship of just over 1,200 tonnes standard displacement and capable of a fraction under 20 knots. It was slightly questionable if it would be a good minesweeper, though, as with a stabiliser installed, the draft was a bit over 10 feet. With the collapsing treaty system meaning that some restrictions were being quietly ignored, a specification was issued based on this design that called for an armament of at least four single four-inch guns, which was in line with the treaty limits, but it was also written that ideally six guns would be better. It would also carry some 40mm pom-poms for anti-aircraft defence, as dick for detecting submarines, depth charges for then destroying them, and high-frequency direction finding equipment to track their transmissions. Twin screws were specified to reduce draft and give the ship better agility. For both low speed work and rapid acceleration, a generator powered version of turbo electric drive was considered, but ultimately rejected as too heavy and complex. Four ships of the Black Swan class emerged to be ordered in 1937 and 1938 in pairs. These displaced 1,250 tonnes and were capable of 19 knots using 3,600 shaft horsepower driving two screws via geared turbines. Armament consisted of three twin 4-inch gun mounts with a pair super firing forward and one aft, a quad 40mm pom-pom, a few machine guns and a number of depth charge rails and throwers. Another pair were due to be built in 1939, but these were at first cancelled but then with the outbreak of World War II, a large series of orders were placed for steadily modified versions, which gradually accumulated another 700 shaft horsepower, allowing for 20 knots, a slightly wider beam, the elimination of minesweeper gear in favour of more depth charges and depth charge throwers, splinter protection for the bridge and guns, and another quadruple pom-pom. As construction continued, 40mm bofors would be brought in to replace the pom-poms, as would upgraded sensors and a variety of 20mm orlican mounts. By the end of the process, the last of the class would be about 200 tonnes heavier than the first ship, and even with additional beam, they'd pretty much exhausted the upgrade capacity of the ship. A total of 37 vessels would be completed, six of which were bound for the Indian Navy, with a number of orders toward the end of the war cancelled and reordered as Hunt-class escort destroyers. Given their frontline role, it is perhaps surprising that only four ships were sunk, Ibis, Kite, Lark and Woodpecker. Three of them were sunk by U-boats, Ibis by Italian torpedo bombers. Additionally, Lark and Chanticleer were written off after being hit in the aft section by acoustic homing torpedoes, although they remained afloat and their hulls were used in harbour afterwards. That said, the class more than got their own back, both in escort and in hunter-killer groups, the latter made famous by Captain Johnny Walker aboard HMS Starling. The class accounted for at least 31 U-boats sunk directly and many more damaged. Walker's second support group accounted for a total of 22 U-boats on its own, many of them claimed by the Black Swan class that made up the majority of its strength for most of the war. Post-war, the surviving ships, now redesignated as frigates, tended to bounce back and forth between the reserves and anti-submarine duty with a series of refits, but would be taken out of service and scrapped in the late 1950s and early 1960s, with two exceptions. Of the six Indian ships, two of them went to Pakistan and were scrapped around the same time as their Royal Navy counterparts, whilst the remaining four vessels still in service with the Indian Navy hung around until the end of the 1970s. The other exception consisted of four Royal Navy vessels, Flamingo, Acteon, Hart and Mermaid, which were transferred to the West German Navy in the 1950s, 
becoming Graf Spee, Hipper, Scheer, and Scharnhorst, respectively. The first three lasted until the end of the 1960s, whilst the last vessel, Scharnhorst, became a gunnery training ship until 1980, and then spent another decade as a damage control training ship before she was finally scrapped in 1990. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.